Hi everyone, it's Sam and I'm back with this beautiful atmospheric mermaid weekly spread, the second in my mermaid series. I share the full process from the blank page on how I create this artwork. So let's get started. So I wanted to draw my mermaid from the side looking up at the moon in the sky. I used the dot grid to draw out a six space square within which I could draw my circle. I found the center point and then this is the important line which is for the direction of the head. You can see from this angle which goes through the center point of the circle that that's going to be how I show her looking up. The center line horizontally is the brow line and then I draw a line for where the hair should go and map out that distance between those two lines a further couple of times. This will give me the base of the nose line and the chin line. This way of mapping out the face is based on the Loomis method. I find the guidelines really reassuring whenever I start a portrait because then I know the proportions are going to be more or less okay even if I change things. Now this is the eye line that sits a third of the way down from where the eyebrows sit. And this is going to be my starting point for drawing out the side view of her face. Drawing the eye from the side, it's basically a rounded triangle where you extend the lines a little bit for the upper and lower eyelashes. When you're drawing faces at this sort of small scale, you can only put in the key features really. So the bridge of the nose tends to sit opposite that eyeball. And we already know where the base of the nose should go. So that makes that easier. Draw in my eyebrow above the brow line and the hint of a forehead. I draw another line from the tip of the nose sloping backwards for the lower half of the face just as a sort of guide and then I will map in where I think the lips should go. It is again the side view. The easiest way to think of drawing a mouth from the side view is of a heart turned on its side with a line through the middle. You'll notice when I draw the chin, it tends to be a little bit below the guideline, but that tends to be the way I draw them. It's totally up to you. So now the angle of the jaw tends to sit behind the halfway guideline, the vertical one, and that'll go up towards where the ear should sit. I think describing it makes it sound more complicated than it is. So just keep practicing basically, that's what I've done and you'll find it gets so much easier. So I've just erased all the excess guidelines now and I've started with my mechanical pencil, which is an HB pencil and a 0.5 millimeter nib. So it's very fine and it'll help me get those beautiful details in. I've started to build up quite a library of videos now showing how I draw portraits of cartoon characters. I have drawn the portraits where the characters are facing face on and three quarter view and then this one is a side profile. I'm thinking of putting them all in a playlist together but for now see the video above for another moon gazing character. So now I've defined the face I have gone back to my 2H pencil to draw in where I think the hair should go. So I hope you enjoyed this little mini tutorial within the video on doing a side profile face. Now we're going to concentrate on drawing the rest of the mermaid body. So I decided to draw this mermaid sitting on a rock looking up at the moon with her arm outstretched with a moonstone crystal. It's meant to be a magical scene where she's using the power of the moon to re-energize her magic moonstone crystal. Moonstone is meant to have many magical properties, including inspiring intuition and awakening feminine energy and divinity. It is also meant to chase away negative thoughts and restore mental balance. And I really loved that idea for my mermaid character that she ritually recharges her special crystal whenever there's a full moon 
and that's basically what this whole scene is meant to represent. I often used my bullet journal as a way of expressing myself and this was a way of really wanting to harness my own feminine intuition and banish negative thoughts going into the week ahead. I'm just drawing in where her hair will go and now I'm going to start outlining the jagged rocks that she's sitting on by drawing a series of jagged angled lines and putting in a bit of shading here and there to suggest the crevices of the rock. Having mapped out pretty much everything I need in my 2H pencil, just enjoy watching how I use the mechanical pencil to put in those definite stronger lines, especially for the coils of the hair and the shading. Now you'll see how the whole magical scene comes to life. So now it's time to paint. I'm going to start doing all the flesh tones first with scarlet and yellow ochre and white. I mix these together to create two tones of peach, a darker and a lighter pale peach. I'm using my finest brush which you'll find linked below because the actual picture is very small really and I want to stay within the lines. I blend small amounts of the darker peach colour where I need the shaded areas to be such as the lips or beneath the chin and then I dry. So we're going to be painting the moon now. I add a bit of blue to the flesh tones to create a grey and then add some violet and white just to get a bit of variety. Then I proceed to paint the moon with those mix of colours. So now we're on to painting the background. I wanted a really beautiful blue-violet background as my base. I find using a large square brush really useful when I want to cover large areas of the page and make it blend together well. So I'm creating a sort of gradient where it's lighter around the moon and then I progressively darken and add richer colour towards the base. So once all the paint is blended out thoroughly, I'll make sure that I dry the pages before I go on to the next step. I use coloured pencils to shade in the moon in blue and purple and then go round my stylized clouds which have little curly cues which is just something I love to do. But it's just to enhance that sense of a magical scene. So now we're on to the mermaid's hair. I choose to do her hair in a pale turquoise, which is basically mixing turquoise blue and white, and then use a purer turquoise where I need to add the shading. So you'll see me picking up a metallic watercolour paint set. That's because I was anticipating putting some metallics onto the mermaid's tail. But I started by doing a base in normal gouache using a watery mix of a crimson colour. So here starts the shimmer with some purple for the tips of the tail and rose gold metallic watercolour for the main body. I have a little clip at the end of the video that really shows how much shine and shimmer you get from these metallic paints. So once everything's dry, it's time to use the fine liner pens for outlining all the main features. I use a turquoise colour that matches the hair and then brown for the features of the face and the flesh parts. I find the fine liner pens really do their job in getting the main characters or whatever the subject is to stand out from the painted background. Yeah. 
Here I've switched to a dark blue to outline bits of the hair and the necklace and the crystal. And I've chosen a purple fine liner pen to put in all those fish scales, which is essentially a scalloped edge going right the way down the tail. I hope you're really enjoying this video and this mermaid series in general. Um, please consider subscribing or liking or commenting on this video if you do. I'd really appreciate it and it will go such a long way to supporting the channel and making sure you get more videos. So I'm just using a peach colour pencil to add some shading and finishing touches to my mermaid. So at this point I was looking at my page feeling it did lack a little bit of drama and depth so I started with painting the rocks and the sea in a sort of dark blue purple colour and then added some splatter in two shades of purple. So it's time to bring the drama with some black and dark blue paint. I first used my quill brush to paint in the shards of the rocks with a sort of negative painting style that leaves the pale paint beneath to show through while I highlight the forms and texture of the rock. And then I use that same dark blue black mixture liberally around the mermaid and around the waveforms so that it really adds to that sense of atmosphere and drama that I'm after. I blend out the darker paint into the lighter layer beneath so the whole scene comes together. So now I'm mixing up even more black and blue and using two square brushes to add a great deal of dark splatter pretty much all over the double page spread. I dab some of the excess with tissue and then make sure I've dried it with a hairdryer. I'm using white gouache to do the same sort of splatter effects but in white this time to represent sea foam. I really love this effect, I think it really brings on the drama and totally makes this scene look so magical. So I'm just using my dark fine liner to redefine any areas of the painting that got lost in all that splatter and drama. And my white gel pen is perfect to colour in the crystal and the clouds and show some rays coming off the crystal. So I decided to use my coloured pencils this time to divide the double page spread for my weekly because it then didn't distract too much from the main painting. I then used a pastel highlighter and my fine liner pens to add in the dates and details. I'll make sure everything is linked in the description below for whatever I've used to do the painting today. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how this has evolved from the blank page to these finishing touches. I'm just going to be using my white gel pen to add stars and a black fine liner pen to go over highlighting the texture that you'd see in the rocks. It really shows what you can do in a bullet journal if you have the time and the motivation of course but I really love this spread I cannot wait to use it next week and I really hope it has inspired you too. I felt the moon needed to stand out a little bit more so I just went over some of it with a fine line of black pen which is water soluble and touch that with a very fine little brush and it really did help bring the moon forwards. And there you have the finished mermaid spread. So to finish the rest of the weekly spread I decided to draw a little seahorse with a matching colour palette to go with my mermaid spread. When it comes to drawing creatures, I definitely recommend looking at some reference images. Obviously, this one is a fantasy seahorse, so I didn't really stick to anything too exact, but made sure that the distinctive features of a seahorse, such as its long nose and its curly tail, were evident so that it was recognisable. And then I added a few doodles just to make it my own. 
So for painting the background, I used white and grey just to create this really lovely subtle pastel background. Once that was dry, I could get on with painting the seahorse. So I put French Ultramarine as a strong colour, I didn't dilute it down too much. And then this technique is called negative space painting, which I did refer to earlier on in the video for the mermaid page. And that really is where you're painting everything around the subject to bring the subject out. So in this case, it's the seaweed, the seabed and the background. I do love a bit of splatter, obviously. I do a similar technique with my March Plan With Me Spring Flower Bulb Spread, which I definitely think you should look at if you're interested in my more painterly style videos. Just see the link above for more details. So now I've just mixed up some violet and blue because I want to focus on painting the actual seahorse itself. I use the violet to paint where I want the parts of the seahorse to recede, as in to go backwards, such as the shadow underneath the head of the seahorse. And then I'll use white for the parts of the body that I want to have come forward, like on the belly. I don't know if you recall the Easter bunnies I did for my April plan with me. I did a similar thing where I pushed and pulled with white and grey in that case to form the 3D shape of the bodies. In this time it's purple and white, but it's the similar principle. I'm just mixing up some bluey grey and charcoal for the backgrounds and then I use a fine brush to suggest all the weeds and vegetation that are along the seabed and around the seahorse. This page of the weekly spread really didn't take too long in the end, not once the seahorse drawing was put in. And now I'm using my fine liner pens in the blue and in the violet to add all the texture and details to the seahorse itself. And because they're water soluble pens, you can always blend out if you just apply a bit of water on a, a small brush I'd recommend so that you don't disturb too much of the painting beneath. And that was it really for the seahorse. I was very happy with the way it was. I thought it created a very atmospheric spread down there in the corner and leaving me a lot of room for the rest of my weekly spread. So this is the final setup for the week. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have and you feel inspired and motivated to do something similar of your own. Oh yes, and don't forget to look at this footage to see the glimmer of the metallic paints. I'll see you next week with another mermaid spread. Bye for now.